upset, I need you now Cause I'm losing patience Bye for you and knocking on my door I said love is a two-way road He don't care no more, I'm not going crazy Needed you just to help forget it all And it was easy, you put the records on to replay Dance till we couldn't see straight Till the morning came Hey, 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 it's B-Rad Celebrity Stylist. Welcome to the Hairstylist Empowerment Podcast. So today's guest is Venica from Salon Venica. So Venica has almost 30 years experience, originally from Washington State. She joined the team of, Amer of amazing salon for more than 17 years, becoming an educator and mentor. The highlight of Venica's early training was attending the acclaimed Sassoon Academy, recognized worldwide as the ultimate modern hair education. For the past 15 years, Venica lived in Knoxville, Tennessee, where she has worked as a stylist while raising her three children. In 2015, Venica opened her own salon, Studio Venica, continuing education in the foundation of a great stylist, and Venica attends classes, workshops, and hair shows. Studio Venica is a certified Olaplex salon and has certified the she or SHE. Is that she or SHE? She. She certified she by SoCap Hair Extension Salon. Venica herself is the head, head of brand education at California Glam, a brand ambassador for Anti.Pro Pro by Scalfix, and part of the Cali Glam Squad for California Glam. So I want to welcome you, uh, Venica, to the show today. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much. I'm excited. So how does it feel being so loved? So to get a little bit of history on that question, when I posted Venica's post that her interview is going to be aired on Monday, so the Monday that you're watching right now um, was coming up, so many people commented, hearted, said, oh, I love her. She's wonderful. You know, Steve is like your bestie. I think he's probably like your biggest <laughs> cheerleader. <Yeah. laughs> so how does it feel? to be so loved by so many people well I don't know how to say how it feels I'm so <laughs> grateful because I love everybody too I just I'm so grateful and I just I love it I, I feel blessed I feel very blessed yeah and it's amazing that you know what I mean it's when people know you I think it's incredible because I think we all work so hard and we feel well we're insignificant or nobody even knows us at all and then all of a sudden something gets posted and floods of you know praises praises start coming in it's gratitude i have gratitude that's all i can say about that <laughs> grateful i just always loved it i always gravitated toward making people feel beautiful and so then when i graduated high school i went to beauty school you know and i always thought that hair was my passion but truly people are my passion mm. and doing hair is my medium that i'm so grateful to you know have to be able to fulfill my passion of making people feel beautiful and good about themselves um and making a living as well which uh, you know i have for so many years and i'm so grateful for yeah and i think so that's beauty what it school is. Yes. first time ever going to a salon <laughs> <laughs> Wow. And, and school, I, I, I think going to school isn't quite the same as, you know, some industry experts have been doing it for doing it for years, because I know there's some amazing okay. stories that happened even when I was in school, because at least when I was in school, we did hair, plus we did aesthetics as well. So and, and yeah. one story from what we had, a girl was waxing another girl's eyebrows. The wax was too hot. She pushed it up. She was left with a quarter of her brow left. <laughs> that sounds like beauty school. <laughs> it it, it was know. difficult. It went to a private beauty school, which was real regimented. Mm -hmm. And for Washington State, you had to have 1,600 hours to graduate, and they required 2,000 hours to graduate. Oh, and wow. so it was, they were real on it, which, of course, is good. Mm -hmm. But it was, it was pretty tough. And, yeah, there was, I think, my very first haircut I ever did on the floor mm -hmm. was a men's haircut that took me, like, three hours. And you're just petrified the whole time you know 
Oh, wow. Was, I get, <laughs> and I guess that's the thing. There's so many hairs and where do you start? And you're so nervous, even though yeah. the teachers come over and they give you the guide. But still, I guess, too, when you're, it's your first time and it's not on a yeah. mannequin, it's a live person. And if you mess yeah. up, <laughs> you, messed up for real. You mess, yeah. you mess up a lot. So basically, yeah. so you went from doing the home. So your mom did uh, hair in the kitchen, doing your hair from there. But then you went to yeah. school, and then now in 2015, you opened up your own salon. So now you're a female entrepreneur. So, <laughs> so tell us about that. How, what was your decision to, it's time for me to branch out on my own. It's time for me to create something that's, you know, totally my own identity. Yeah. Well, in the beginning of my career, I loved being part of a, a big, like, I don't know what you would call it, a court corporate salon or I was mm -hmm. a commission based stylist at a very large salon mm -hmm. and I loved it. I think it's such a great way to start out because they had education. They sent, you know, like you said earlier, they sent me down to Sassoon. They facilitated educators to come in all of the time. And, um, and then we had in-house education, which I eventually was a part of. And so it was such a great way to have the senior stylist around that, you know, you were, being mentored by and and it was like a safe place for me to grow and to learn and get my confidence up and stuff as a stylist and then when I moved to Tennessee um, I worked at another big salon here for a while and it was fine but I was starting to kind of get that feeling of I want to be on my own I want to be in charge of myself you know and I did love the salon environment I always did but it was kind of I don't know maybe <laughs> getting younger or I don't know I you know I like you said too I have I have three kids and I just was mm -hmm. I don't know I just I was ready for something new but I wasn't prepared to open up a salon because at the time there wasn't anything and any option other than renting a chair which mm -hmm. to me that was just the same as being in a salon commission in a way exactly um, yeah. environmentally mm -hmm. um, but I didn't think oh a huge building I'm gonna open a salon I'm gonna have to hire people this and that well then the salon suites i heard about that concept mm -hmm. which was new and i was like well what is that and you know basically of course you can have your own complete standalone business actual salon you know that you just rent the room in the building and mm -hmm. that just sounded perfect to me because i wanted that ownership i wanted the freedom to do exactly how i saw things and be a hundred percent everything my way and so that's when I heard about that, I looked into it and I immediately, I was like, this was just tailor made for me. Mm -hmm. So now I have two suites where I am oh. because, you know, I have extra space. <laughs> Wow, so, that's that's a that's anyway. amazing because here, um, for those that don't know, I'm in Toronto, Canada. So we actually just had the salon suites introduced to us here. So very close right. to where I live, they just opened that up as well. So anybody thinking of moving from behind the chair in a commission salon, would you suggest that they should check out maybe the solo salons or like a salon suite as an option? Oh, absolutely. And of course, there's nothing wrong with being in a commission salon or if you want all that buzz around you more to rent a, your own chair. But if this is what my clients love. They love the feeling that they have their own private salon. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, you have the intimacy where you can close your door and you have the one-on-one -on -one with your client. Cause a lot of clients, they like that privacy, you know, especially if they're getting services like extensions or things like that. They don't want to be sitting next to their neighbor's husband, you know, while their mm -hmm. hair is all, you know, exactly. um, but you still have the salon feel because just the whole environment of the suites you can hear a little bit of other people just a little bit, but you're still, you know, private and exclusive and it's more tailored one-on-one. -on -one. And my clients absolutely love it. And of course the control, I love having the control. So I say, yeah, go for it. If you're interested, it's, it's the best decision yep. for the time in my life that I made it that I could have ever made. Yeah. And I think that's what it is. Cause even for myself, I had a huge salon, huge staff. I had actually two salons at the same time, but then now mm -hmm. just with me, because like you being an educator, I educate all across Canada. I do film, television, video work, all that kind of stuff. So for me, clients do like that intimate. I'm on an upper level and I have a balcony. I have a nice big window. The clients seem to enjoy yeah. that. And then I can pick my own hours, work when I want, 
travel when I need to, you know, educate and do that, that stuff as well. But one question, we're going to go to your kids for a little bit. Um, yeah. Because I think that's one thing that and this is a question I've had before, and you're probably the perfect person to answer it because I don't have kids. <laughs> yeah. I have a niece, but no kids. But how do you yeah. balance being a mom and an entrepreneur and making them work? Well, when I first started out in my career, of course, uh, my kids were, you know, coming along and younger. Um, and I worked, you know, real set, dedicated hours. <clears throat> When it came to the point to where I was considering wanting to become an entrepreneur and open my own salon, my youngest at that time was 13. Mm. And so I sat her down and I, and I just told her and I talked to her about it and I asked her, you know, I would, especially first starting out, I'd have to be there night and day pretty much. And I asked her how she felt about it, you know, and if she would be okay with if I wasn't always home you know, right when she got home from school or, or what have you. And uh, she looked at me and she said, mom, please do it. I can just mm -hmm. see you doing this. It would be amazing. I'm so proud of you. You should do it. And so, you know, I did. And my family has just been so supportive and helped me and worked around me. And my older um, kids would help, you know, pick up. But there again, like you say, I can make my own hours. You know, if I know that she has a band concert, in three weeks, I mm -hmm. just book out that time so I can make sure. And so it's actually in the long run, giving me more time with mm -hmm. my kids because I can choose, you know, the time. And plus my, my daughter, she's now 16. Mm -hmm. She loves to hang out at the studio. And, you know, I think on her Facebook profile, it says that she's the assistant there. Or something, <laughs> you know, I mean, she just, <laughs> she thinks it's really cool and her friends stop by. And yes. so it worked mm -hmm. out pretty good, pretty well. Yeah. No, and I think that's the biggest thing. I think it's to have a community of support, especially when it's your own family, because a lot of people say, don't do it. It's crazy. You go stay where you are because it's going to be a secure income. But even being on a commission salon, it's not a secure income because one week you're going to be really busy. Another week you're going to be really quiet. And most owners aren't going to compensate you for the, the quiet weeks. You get a percentage generally of whatever you, you bring in. So I think, and that's yeah. the biggest thing for people is being afraid because once you're an entrepreneur, you have a totally different mindset because you live by totally. risk every day. You live by risk because you never know. Yeah. But for me, I'm glad because I can book a long day and I can fill that day up and then make as much as I would in a week in an, a regular salon. Or when I used to be on a commission salon, I could make as much on my own in four hours as I made in 40 to 70 hours working at the salon because they had a huge staff. So of course, everybody, and when everybody's on commission, the claws are out. Everybody wants to get every client they can get. But at least when you have your own space and your, your, you know, your whole vibe, and I love the purple. <laughs> obviously i love Thank the purple you. the whole concept I love, I love how the logo is done and speaking of purple you I have did... arm too. really wow yeah, I... <laughs> tattooed on oh you. it's amazing it's amazing yeah <laughs> but you also did that purple you also did that purple short yeah. pixie type i'm in love with that that Thank was you. so amazing well look at your work now it's getting everywhere and when I, everywhere, well, I mean like everywhere. <laughs> and I'm, I'm so grateful for having clients, you know, that trust me and let me do things like that. And mm -hmm. it, it, it's hard. It's not hard to find people that want more fashion type colors. Yes. It's hard to find people that are allowed to have them, mm -hmm. you know, in their, in their work. And yeah. I have one client such a doll and she ha she's had like the pastel rainbow or the real vivid rainbow i just posted yeah. a couple days ago. he wears a wig to work <gasps> oh really because they need her more to have fashion he wears wow. a wig that's how committed she is and i'm like oh you're wow. so great Thank you. <laughs> wow. Um, you, know, as wow. As talk about, you you mentioned something and and, mm -hmm. and it just bothers me because people say oh you shouldn't do this or yeah. you know you shouldn't there's no such thing mm -hmm. you know Everybody has to find what works for them. And one thing might work great for one person mm -hmm. at a certain time in their life. Yes. And something different will work 
at, an, at another, another time, I couldn't have probably been as successful with this if I had started it 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I did say that at first because yes. my sweet experience has been so amazing. I thought, mm -hmm. oh, I wish it was 10 years ago yeah. I did this. Even though it didn't even exist. Yes. And then I thought, no, it wasn't that I wouldn't have worked. You know, no. I was too busy. I was, mm -hmm. the kids were younger. I was driving here and there, whatever. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you have an inkling towards something, no matter what, give it a shot. Yeah. Give it a try. Because all you can do is say, you know what, this wasn't right for me at this time. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you know you tried. So there's no such thing as, oh, don't ever do that. You know, no. and, do and, anything. And, and a lot of us get that. And it's very tough just because I think people are afraid to be accountable for themselves. So, or they don't yeah. want you to be more successful than them. So if they can hold you back, even family members will do that too. Don't try this. Don't do that. Don't do, what yeah. if you get in and you fail? Well, what if you get in and you succeed? It's, it's all in how you, how you look at it. And obviously it's been amazing for you and it's been very successful for you. You know, and that's, I think for any independent business, the first five years are the toughest when you start yeah, and yeah. you're over half the hump already, right? You start 2015, yeah. so it's 18 now. So you're like yeah. a year and a half, you're, you've got your five down and you're, and you're good to go. And <laughs> I know it goes by so quick. <laughs> well, actually, May 1st was my three year anniversary there. Oh, and I, yeah. So, I mean, it feels like I've been there forever. That's all I, where yeah. I've ever been. And mm -hmm. of course it feels like five minutes too, you know, mm -hmm. but one thing I loved in the very beginning, my kids would always joke around. They said that I was abducted by, by an alien because <laughs> I just left and I never came yeah. back home again, you know, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, you have to do that kind of in the beginning. And I was mm -hmm. there at two o'clock in the morning filming Periscope videos yep. and, you know, all of that kind of thing. And that's, you know, what got everything rolling was putting myself out there. And that's the great thing about social media is it affords us all of these connections mm -hmm. that we would never have. When I first started doing hair, there weren't even cell phones, no. you know, and I think, how did anyone get a, how did I ever get a client? I don't even know. You know, I guess the slot I worked at yeah. uh, had an ad in the phone book, I guess, and <laughs> things like that. But it's just so no. crazy to me. And now it's, now it's obviously totally different because we have a lot of the same yeah. friends, things like that. But now, uh, unless you're not only good at hair, but you're great at selfies, you're great at being a psychologist, you're great at video, you're great at doing, you know, everything. It's, the stylists today are so different than the stylists of years ago. Like you said, you can just put an ad in the phone book or people will call you up and they'll come in. Yeah. Now you have to have a website. They want to see everything on their phone. They want to look at who are you, what your salon looks like, how can I book, can I book online, can I, right. you know, do you have any videos, do you have social media, do you have before and afters, do you have before nobody ever did that you just went you were the local salon so everybody went to you now being yeah. an artist i think is so different because now a lot of us are also educators platform artists speakers you know brand ambassadors where where years ago we did, they didn't really have brand ambassadors they had reps for the company that sold the salon right. stuff but they never had hairstylists really and who better to talk about a product than actual hairstylist that uses it? Not somebody who's trained in sales, you know, it's who, so true. who has it's no so hair true. background at all, <laughs> you know, sort of. Yeah. Thing. But well, moving forward, so who do you find were some of your greatest influences in your life? Um, certainly Sassoon. Mm -hmm. uh, he's probably the greatest. Him as a stylist and his history and his background and his work. And, and then also his teaching method, you know, the schools, how they, you know, that to me personally, that is the foundation of almost everything that I do, you know, even coloring, you know, you think of, you know, you do a haircut and you think of the angles and the shapes. Well, you think of the same thing, you know, in coloring as well. And I, I'm Sassoon in my head all the yes. time, you know, and I'm so <laughs> grateful to have that. Um, I, gosh, influences. I, everybody watching dynasty when I was a kid, that was my yep. big influence, you know, oh, the yeah. hair and makeup yep. and that kind of stuff. You know? exactly. and I always loved it. <laughs> so modern day and, and this might sound corny because, you know, one out of every five hairstylists might say it, but it's the absolute truth. And I'm going to just say guy Tang. Yes. Guy Tang. Yeah. He, he just brought the passion back and, and the um, inclusiveness back in our industry. 
Yeah. And, and more, more so than anyone, because, you know, mm -hmm. for a lot of years there, and you, and you know this, you know, from mm -hmm. back earlier, yes. everything, oh, the person next to you was against you. And the person down the street mm -hmm. had the secret blonde formula and they couldn't tell you. Yeah. And someone in, you know, Detroit didn't want someone down in San Diego knowing what they did, like it mattered, you know, and everybody was just so, you know, their own kind of, yeah. and <clears throat> so strange. And now, you know, Guy Tang came out and mm -hmm. he just said, look at this beautiful thing I did. And yes. this is how I did. Mm -hmm. And, and this was my formula and I stood on one foot. So you stand on one foot, you know, I mean, he was just yeah. like everything, whatever. Yeah. And it just, it made it all beautiful again mm -hmm. to me. And of course, so and I, he's showing, I, yeah, he's showing everything and he's giving his formulas. He's helping the people. He has the hair besties. I mean, I know Guy Tang personally. I've met him yeah. live. He's you know what I mean? So it's, it's, a, if you look at my Facebook picture, obviously it's with Guy Tang, yeah. but he yeah. is one of the most nicest sweetest mm -hmm. guys you will ever meet and if he sees yeah. three thousand people there he'll wait until he sees all three thousand people to say hi I know. to him get a picture with I him to do that that stuff and it's and it, yeah and it, because it's the same it's like even in my town if i wanted to fly you in have you teach and then invite other salons to come and watch they'd be like oh well no we don't want to go because you're going to try to steal our staff it's like, well, no, let's, let's get everybody, like, if you're so insecure that your staff are going to leave, probably yeah. they are anyway. Nobody owns anybody. It's, and the same, I think, if a client wants to leave you, it's their choice. No one owns anyone. Right. But why not help? Why not have this community of wonderful people, as they say, because there's Guy Tang, there's Goonies, there's a lot of different groups that, that have that, even, even with Andy Dot Pro, they, everybody has their team of people that really believe in what they do, and they create amazing products. Same with California Glam. I want to get into some of that, too, um, because... A lot of my clients are really allergic to PPDs and a lot of these colors and things like that. And I know yeah. that California Glam has been doing some amazing stuff, but I still want to cover a lot more ground before we get get there. We might need no, I we might need three episodes with you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, you know, there's a salon on every corner, and there always has been. Mm -hmm. You know, and yep. there are plenty of stylists for everybody, and there are plenty of clients for everybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and some, sometimes, like you said, it, there's not a fit and no. that's fine. You know, there's a hundred yeah. more right behind that person. You exactly. know, I, I just, I hate, being a, I'm not against, I want everybody to win. Mm -hmm. Everyone, everyone to be successful. You know, I'm, I and, and I think that's the biggest thing. I think one of the things too, and that's why so many stylists are afraid even to post their work because every time you post your work, you, you're up for rejection. Some even say, Oh, right. I don't like that. But then that's their opinion. Oh, I could have done better. Or, you know what I mean? And, and we're also competing with, um, you know, I mean, these YouTube hairstylists who never went to school, who, <laughs> like, no offense, <laughs> but yeah, paying yeah. Grand for school and paying, you know, just buying stuff at a, a store and saying, hey, I know how to mix stuff and get a burnt scalp and things like that. But we're really not going to go there. But as I say, we are professional. We are licensed. We, we want harmony in the, the, the community itself. Um, so basically, yeah, so going into some of that, what do you find is probably the biggest issue for you in the industry itself right now? The biggest issue? Yeah. Um, I would say not individual stylists, but mm -hmm. companies, it seems yes. like put, try to down another company. Mm. You know, I see that a lot, you know, with, uh, you know, a company will come out with a great product mm -hmm. and then all these other ones will trail behind it and yes. with making, you know, oh, something their similar. version. Of it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Their version of it, mm -hmm. which, you know what, that's fine. You know, you have your version. There's always been a hundred mm -hmm. versions of everything. Of course but there is. Yeah. And they, they down you know, they, they try to talk bad and, and I, that's what I don't like. And no, because everybody's going to love what they love. It's going to work yeah. and say, some people may love the way I do hair. Some people may love the way that you do hair. We use exactly the same color, same formula, same everything, but it's just, it's right. the personal. It's whoever is the right fit for them. And yep. it's the same. And probably with the manufacturing industry, it should be like the hair community as well. Why not band together, create something great for all of us, 
<laughs> you know, or work because there's so many products now that are kind of doing that because you'll see, well, this one goes with this one and this one goes with this one, but they're completely different companies. But right. people are like, I have to use this in every color, in every lightener, in every process that I do, or people are sensitive. Um, it makes a real big, um, big difference. And same with, uh, I'm going to give a shout out. I'm sorry, but I'll give a shout out to Antidot Pro. So if you do not use it, please use it. I'm not paid for this. I use it myself. And this product, because I have so many clients that have sensitivities that for them, my clientele is a lot of celiacs, um, MCS, which is multiple chemical sensitivity, as well as cancer patients. And those are the people I work on. And for them, this is a lifesaver and it's a game changer for them. You know, so, so just using it, they're, you know, they couldn't. And as I said before, because with my clients, a lot of my clients are allergic to PPD. They're allergic to ammonia. They're allergic to a lot of the additives they put in a lot of products. So that's why we're trying to find the products. And I'm always looking for the best that I can find. And if I find one better than the one I already have, that's going to serve my client better. Most of my clients don't care what color line I use as long as it's effective. They don't right. even know. They don't even ask. You know, and one of the other beautiful things about Antidot Pro, mm -hmm. and I have the perfect example. I had a mm -hmm. client, and I did her hair for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was always fine. All of the sudden, she started getting an allergic reaction. Mm -hmm. It just came upon her. And this happens all of the time. Yeah. And so originally, I found Antidot Pro because I was looking for something for her. So I started posting in all the different groups on Facebook or whatever, to, you know, and some people would give, you know, advice that I won't mm -hmm. repeat and yeah. shows never try. Mm -hmm. um, and then finally, uh, I was watching a, a video mm -hmm. and it was Tracy Cunningham. Okay, yes. It, it was like a little last minute thing. She's like, oh, and by the way, you know, this is how long ago? Three years ago mm -hmm. now. And, you know, I always use this and I thought, oh, that's what I need then. I want to try I'll buy that, you <laughs> know, that's exactly. Yeah. And so I ordered it, you know, and, um, and I got it and I used it and it was, it was amazing and it, mm -hmm. and it completely yeah. safe for my client. But what's so great about it mm -hmm. is Antidot Pro is also preventative mm, because yeah. you can develop, you know, um, a, a reaction. Yeah, sensitivities over time. Over yeah. time. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you start, even with, if you don't think you have sensitivity or you've never mm -hmm. had a reaction, still using the yeah. Antidot Pro is preventative in the long term, which I love that about mm -hmm. it too. So I use it on everybody yeah. no matter what. Oh yeah, same with, same with me for everything. Yeah. Even perming. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I <laughs> you know. know. You use a little bit of solution. Well, yeah, because that, that, and I think. Airline, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know. I'm all in, 100%. <laughs> no, but, but it's amazing that the products are coming out now. It's wonderful, too, that it's Canadian. So, yeah. because I believe they're in Montreal, which is only a few hours from Toronto by train. So, <laughs> so. well, you know, I grew up in Washington State and I grew okay. up in Spokane, Washington. Yeah too far from Canada. You know, okay, the, yes. Yeah, just so, close to the border. Yeah, for Yeah, Vancouver, and so I Vancouver. even to Canada all the time. And okay. when I was like high school, like the band trips or concert yeah. um, or choir competitions, yeah. we don't go up to Canada or go up to the hot springs and so yeah. <laughs> so I'm, yeah. I I enjoy Canada too. It's good. I've actually did I did a Europe I did a a US tour. I went actually right from our border here at Sudbury right up to Seattle. So uh -huh. I just missed. So if I had to went Seattle and then went around, I was going to go up through the States and come back through Canada. Unfortunately, uh -huh. our gas is more expensive <laughs> yeah, yeah. than the U S. So it was easier for me just to come back. But, uh, but I did see some amazing, you know, sites in the U S and I've seen mm -hmm. probably about 90% of the U S and I yeah, travel there great. quite a bit and that sort of thing. But who, so when you do the hair that you do, mm -hmm. what kind of, inspiration where do you get your inspiration from is it from the sky the leaves the trees just like so when you think of something so the newest one you came out is a multicolor that you mm -hmm. just posted so yeah. where kind of did that inspiration come from well first and foremost my inspiration always comes from the client themselves mm -hmm. you know who they are whether it's something super creative or whether it's you know some beautiful blonde highlights and a trim you know mm -hmm. Um, so the consultation is the first part. So for that one that I just did in particular, mm -hmm. she, she told me, she said, I want whatever <laughs> rain 
so majestic. She said, I don't know what colors you want to use. <laughs> want to do it. I just want to look like I'm just not even from here. And I said, yeah. okay. <laughs> okay, I can do that. Yeah. See, and and I, th yeah. I think too, as a stylist, especially to if you're not afraid to go for it, that you can just be when you're when you have total freedom, rather mm -hmm. than a client that says well, you can do anything, but make sure my bangs are this long, the back yeah. has to be here, and then they end up blow drying it the same as what they already had, and then yeah. they're like, it's yeah. not any different. But they have so many guidelines on you that you can't really be you can't really be free, or they want a total change, but they don't want to work on the work on the hair but yeah um it, but it's nice when you can see those and that's it's nice because years ago you never see somebody walking around with blue hair pink hair like just as their normal color yeah where, you know everybody was more conservative and you were more adventurous if you had like highlights right you know, i just it love it I, when i see creative hair color like that it just makes me feel happiness mm -hmm. you know and and i talk to my clients i talked to my client i had today and she was saying, oh, I would love to have that. Or she, no, she said, I love that type of thing, but I would never do it. And, mm -hmm. and she, I said, well, a lot of jobs don't let people have that. She goes, oh, mine would never. And I said, that's so sad to me because I've never known anyone who isn't brightened by seeing that. Even mm -hmm. if they say, oh, I would never do it, they yeah. still think it's beautiful and it makes them happy. Exactly. You know, and, there's, and there's little different ways that you can put that spark of color, whether it's a little piece, whether yeah. it's under lights, or I find a yeah. lot of women too that maybe they don't do their hair, but even when they go to the spa, they'll have normal nail polish, but on their toes, they'll have the bright, funky color. Yeah, that nobody yeah. sees, but it makes it fun for them, right? And it's because I think everybody wants to express themselves. And my thing is always about expressing your truth and being true to your core right because if something's not in alignment with you then you should it doesn't matter if whether it's negativity whether it's people whether it's whatever it might be always straight to true true to your core because eventually the truth always you know will will triumph and and that as well so with with you doing so much do you have any upcoming projects on the go right now well, the next thing that I have immediately coming up is um, Premier Orlando, mm -hmm. which is the biggest hair show in North America. Yep. And uh, I am going actually with Ansidot Pro. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, so I'm really excited. Yeah. It's, I, I, love, I love the hair shows. Yeah. There's so much. Um, more than anything, it's just inspiring. Mm -hmm. It's inspiring to see what you see, but also just to be around, you know, like-minded, your community of people. Mm -hmm. You know, and there's some people that I only ever see at a hair show, mm -hmm. but I interact with them socially yeah. every week, you mm -hmm. know, but I don't ever physically see them. So it's almost like no. you feel like you're coming back together with your family. It is. It is. It's like almost whole, like home week, but even though it's yeah. three days, well, two days in the one day of education, but yeah. in some, sometimes I've been the last couple of years, but it almost feels like that isn't enough time to like see yeah. everything and a lot yeah. of, because a lot of us have, we know each other, we've met in person, but a lot of people haven't, um, they know, we all know each other, but we only know each other from social media. Right. Right. <laughs> so right. When you go. And it's like the same when I met somebody who's like a favorite buddy of yours, I think Steve. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Diver. So it's the same when you talk to people online and then you see them live, you're yeah. it's almost like surreal a little bit. Yeah. Oh, you're like, am I, told I dreaming? It's like, yeah. really like here. It's yeah. Like, there's well, the, one thing the that Saturday I have church had... guy. <laughs> That's it. That's it. <laughs> you know, I think that at hairstylists, I think that we're pretty much open people. Yeah. You know, we are kind of who we are. Yeah. And so I can honestly say I've never met someone for real in person. That wasn't yeah. exactly how I thought they were going to be. Yeah, the same. Yeah, the you same. You know, which I love that. <laughs> and there's, well, doing things live like Facebook mm -hmm. Live or when we used to do Periscope mm -hmm. or Insta Stories now or whatever yeah. it might be. There, you know, it's, there isn't room for error. You know, you can only put on a facade for so long. Exactly. You know? And so I think we really are getting the real people mm -hmm. coming through. And so I love that. Yeah, and which is nice. And that's why I love doing the Hairstylist Empowerment podcast as well, because a lot of these people we all know will be on in the future. I'll probably leave some hints if you go to the Facebook page. Um, but uh, but as I say, having Vinica on is like amazing, amazing. Oh. Because that's the thing. It's like... Like when you can just talk to people, be natural, and the conversation flows, 
Like yeah. for me, one thing I do when I interview if people don't know, nothing is scripted. <laughs> Absolutely nothing is scripted. It's whatever kind of comes out and whatever way the conversation is going to flow, that's how it kind of flows. And I think people like that when it's a natural dialogue that's not, well, you know, hey, Vinica, question number five. Right. <laughs> you know, and I like, oh, that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, it, but it's just, yeah, there's so much. But one thing I really want to know is about California Glam because it's, it's California Glam PPD free. California Glam has two distinct color lines. Okay. That we've just, that we've come out with that mm -hmm. I was, uh, along with a couple, you know, mm -hmm. a couple other stylists helped develop it, yes. you know, tested it for two years. Mm -hmm. Um, California Glam Epic hair okay. color is PPD free. Oh, yes. Awesome. Awesome. And it's amazing. Yeah. And I can tell you it is because yeah. I, I got tubes from Italy that were white with just, you know, six B on oh, okay. it, you they, know, they, that yeah. I tested. It mm -hmm. is tested behind the chair. I, yeah. I used it on clients. And if I said, this is too gold, then Javier, who is the yep. creator of California, he said, okay, I'll tell him it's mm -hmm. scrapped. Start over. Not so gold. You know, it was just, it's amazing. There's organic ingredients that are mm -hmm. um, a part of it. It's amazing. Yeah. It's the yeah. best color. It's so good. And then we just launched all our Gloss X hair color, okay. which does have PPD. Okay. And because, um, you know, a lot of stylists, they just love that. You know, they want mm -hmm. that. And so with the gloss, is that more like a high shine? But is it a is it a permanent or is it a demi or a semi? It's permanent. Both lines are permanent. Oh, permanent. Okay. And um, Gloss X has the Gloss X molecule, mm -hmm. and it's the only it's the only uh, color hair okay. color line that has that in there. Oh, okay. And it is the highest shine you'll ever see. Well, Epic's pretty shiny though too. <laughs> But it, yeah. it is high shine, but it's it's also for a color uniformity, mm -hmm. and you know it, it controls the saturation. It's it's mm -hmm. amazing too. So now both lines are permanent <clears throat> permanent lines, mm -hmm. but then we have a seven volume, and you can oh. use any of the shades with okay. double seven volume, and it'll give you a demi like effect to the oh, hair. Okay. So I tone all of my clients with you know with California Glam with oh. like the seven volume perfect so with yeah. processing time how long does it normally take and do you need a cap or no or heat well i per nothing i personally you don't need heat i don't okay. use heat ever okay. um not that you can't not that it's okay. bad i just yeah. don't um mm -hmm. the processing time well first of all here's another thing it's mixed it's 3.4 ounce tubes oh okay and the epic is 5.99 a tube <laughs> and the gloss x is 6.99 wow. and so um and it's mixed one to one and a half mm -hmm. so i yeah. mean you were so you're getting, getting way more all, product than the one yeah. to one and that yeah. was important to to mm -hmm. to me when we were developing it you know yeah. i wanted to think of the individual stylist as well you know mm -hmm. and and that's why we kept them kind of small epic has 40 shades mm -hmm. and gloss x has 97 shades mm -hmm. you oh, know so it's big yeah <laughs> so there's lines that they have, you know, there's 200 shades and, yeah. and it's just like, which is fine too. No, but, but I think, I think too, if you're a well-rounded stylist and a good colorist, you don't yeah. need that many shades. You can make whatever shade you need out of your, your yeah. primary, secondary, tertiary colors, They're right? really and, not yeah. 50 shades, <laughs> no. There just isn't. No. So, uh, <laughs> you know from experience. <laughs> but as far as processing, you yeah. were asking. You know, yeah. like, you know, the, the permanent color, you know, 20 volume gray coverage, you know, 35 minutes. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Just a couple clients that I leave it on for 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. They're, they just have, you know, paint stubborn, stubborn. Hair. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Wiry, coarse, resistant, you know, but at least yeah. they cover. And I think that's the biggest thing for stylists is finding a line that will cover gray, that mm -hmm. will, won't irritate the, yeah. the scalp. Um, as to say, if you're adding the anti dot in, if you're putting in. Yep some other products things like that that usually but is the is it a coconut base or is it there's something there's is there coconut in it coconut oil it it, it contains organic coconut oil yeah. and coconut milk oh okay i believe i all have to yeah. look at i know there's coconut <laughs> i know there's coconut people it's summertime yeah. you'll smell like tropicana yeah <laughs> well there's another great thing too you know we have our dedicated developers there's mm -hmm. seven volume through 40 volume and they smell like bananas Oh, okay. And it, they're amazing. And, and they're perfect, you know, for with our lighteners. We have a violet and a blue lightener okay. as well. 
yeah. which are the best lighters I've ever used. I'm just going to say they, just <laughs> they have bar gum so they don't swell. You okay. can get foils to the scalp with lightener and there's okay. no bleeds. And that'll really, and that'll really cut the gold and the, the orange. Yeah, oh. absolutely. It's beautiful. Okay. They're wonderful. So, um, and the, and the hair color doesn't smell bad. I actually have clients comment mm -hmm. that, that usually the hair color doesn't smell good or that doesn't yeah. smell bleach, you know? So, well, and that's the biggest thing. And especially too, if the fumes are like, you know, it, the smelling or they get the burning around the eyes, it's not on your scalp, but just when it's there because of the high yeah. ammonia levels. And because I think we're developing just in general as a population where we're, we have more food sensitivities, we have more sensitivities to products, to skincare, to, because a lot of the ingredients yeah. are changing. And now what they call organic used to be what it used to be years ago, you know, as far as food and things like that, just because they charge you more now to take out what wasn't in there in the first place. <laughs> you know, yeah. so if you buy peanuts, uh, provide you don't have an allergy they charge you more for unsalted than salted but there was never salt on them in the first place but it seems it's true. <laughs> was. It's true. yeah so can you tell me a little bit about maybe i'm not sure how this works but what's the cali glam squad well the cali glam squad it started out with the original javier came to four of us mm -hmm. there was four of us originally that he had found through watching back again to Periscope, because this all happened around the same time. Yep. <laughs> uh, stylists that he saw, and he, he liked what they did, and he was also looking for a little bit more seasoned stylist. Mm -hmm. And um, he contacted us and asked if we would be interested in um, helping him develop a color line. Mm -hmm. And so we started, you know, like a, just a Facebook messenger room, and he yeah. goes, we need a name for this, and I'm the naming person. Okay. <laughs> I said... Well, it's Cal I said, we're the Cali Glam Squad, you yeah. know, that's how that started, you yeah. know, as far as that. <laughs> um, a couple of them have, you know, since went in different, different, mm -hmm. different directions, yes. but, uh, but they're still, you know, totally supportive. And mm -hmm. uh, one of them is a full-time educator now with Olaplex yeah. and another mm -hmm. one, she was working uh, with a different company. Okay. But Steve yeah. and I are still, we're the ones, yeah. you know, <laughs> and so that's, that you, but Steve is so busy now too. He's yeah. just like insanely busy. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's busy. And, and, we actually, um, we actually got to go to Italy last year. Oh. Uh, we, with California Glam, we went mm -hmm. um, in Bologna in March is uh, mm -hmm. Cosmoprof Bologna, which is the biggest hair show worldwide. Mm -hmm. 250,000 stylists Holy came to that cow. show. It was crazy. Wow. We wow. Four days and wow. we probably saw 50, 60% mm -hmm. of what there was to see. There's yeah. a, you know, Chinese pavilion and yeah. a, I mean just everything it was so great it was so crazy but we actually went to the factory where they're making at that time California glam epic hair color and mm. we got to talk to the chemists and see yeah. the process that they go through and all of the the measures you know for quality control and mm -hmm. ask the questions you know and yeah. it, it was just wonderful it was amazing mm -hmm. so when I say that this is you know, truly made by stylists for stylists. It's the truth. Mm -hmm. You know, it is a from the behind the chair hair color and company in general. You know, we're mm -hmm. we're going to be releasing here pretty soon. Um, mm -hmm. We're I'm just going to say we're coming out with a shampoo and a conditioner. <gasps> yeah, you guys heard it here first. <laughs> 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 On the hair <laughs> stylist and podman, it's going to be amazing. Uh, it's yeah. so amazing, and it probably would be out already if I didn't yeah. keep it back saying well yeah. i want a little bit more of this a little yeah. you know and but you want it perfect and that's the thing perfect if we're getting it for our clients then it's something you can really believe in and i yeah. think as a stylist and to work with a company that really works with you as yeah. opposed to a manufacturer that just puts stuff on you they don't yeah. listen and just say um i talk a lot about ppd because a lot of my clients are allergic and i've dealt with several different ppd free companies but then my like literally my clients, if they have PPD, a PPD reaction, it will send them to the hospital or death. It's right. serious. So I have to make sure as a stylist that I know exactly what's going on in their head. Even if it says PPD, I have to know, is there an alternative? Is the alternative better or is it worse or the same as the PPD? Right. 
right? And things like that. So, but I still use PPD free color that still had the smell, had the burn, had the whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah. Obviously I didn't continue to use those, yeah. but it's good to, to know that there's something out there that people can invest in and, and know what's best for their clients. Because I think there is a big movement for people to go cleaner, greener, healthier, you know, in, in the style, same for the stylist to breathe in chemical all day long. Cause now we call it lightener, but then like yeah. say using the word bleach even sounds like it. You walk into the salon, you get the smell of bleach, the smell of ammonia. And now that the products are so much better. It's, getting it's just incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I have to get a drink, but I'm bringing oh, no, that, That's fine. Yeah. We're going to wrap shortly too. <laughs> But, uh, Sorry, you want to see my doggy? Sure. <laughs> Can you see him? Oh, I do. Yes. Oh, I love that type of dog. Yeah. Yeah, they call. Eh, hello. He's a Bernese Mountain dog. He's huge. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he looks smaller on camera. <laughs> oh, you're enormous. <laughs> Sorry about that. I was oh no, on. it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> So, yeah, and real quick, that's another great thing about Answer.Pro mm -hmm. is like some of the other um, old school home remedy things mm -hmm. for allergic or sensitive scalps. Yeah. Answer.Pro doesn't numb the scalp, no. so it won't mask a true allergic reaction, mm -hmm. yeah. which is, you know, dangerous. Mm hmm you know, like you say, you could send someone to the hospital. So exactly, it's, and it's, and and I've heard like some people say, "Well, add sweetener, add this, no. add that." You know what I mean? It's it'll take. I've never done that. Never. <laughs> I've done that. Are you kidding? <laughs> I will. I will use a professional product designed yes. by a company, a professional mm -hmm. company for this purpose. Thank mm -hmm. you very much. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so so it's been amazing. It's been like almost an hour now. Oh gosh! I, I know it's so like, fast, right? Yeah, I love it. That's so much fun. <laughs> this goes. So one last thing I'm going to get you to do is if you have any words of empowerment for our listeners, our viewers, um, that you would like to relay. It could be on anything. It doesn't have to be on hair. It can be if you like, but just any words of empowerment to that you would like to leave with us. Well, what I would like to say is this, um, and and it is about hairstyling. Our clients come to us and they, we need to respect the intimacy that they are for affording us. I think that is the most important thing. We have such a position, you know, over them and the trust that they're putting in us, not only with their appearance, but we physically are touching them. We, it's a very intimate thing. And I think we can make a difference in people's lives. You know, we can really make someone feel beautiful. And I always say that I want you to see the beauty that I see because I see beauty in everyone. And I think if we can just, you know, try to see that in every single person and show it to them in whatever way it may be. And sometimes it's not even about what happens with their hair. It's just about the care that we give them, the eye contact that we give them. Some clients, they don't even look at themselves in the mirror, you know, because how they feel about themselves. We have a role to play in this world for people, for their hearts. And I think that yeah. we always need to respect that. Yeah, you're exactly right. It's totally about the heart connection. It's yeah. not about the money because I believe money comes through service, but it's yeah. about the heart connection that you have, not only with your clients, I think, but with yourself, with a higher power, just with people in general. Because once you connect to them, because you never know that person sitting in your chair, what they've gone through, where they're at. And those are things we don't know. We don't know if they've been right. comp contemplating, you know, leaving this earth <laughs> sooner than later. We don't know if they've had some bad issues going on at home we don't know for some people we're their escape we're yeah. the place that they can feel safe we're the place that um you know that they can go and they can you know we're cheaper than a, a psychiatrist <laughs> we're better <laughs> exactly you know and i say too you know whoever washed your hair but maybe your mom when you were a child mm -hmm. you know we're intimate with them yeah. And, and, and as hairstylists, I think there isn't one of us that can't say we haven't had someone cry in our chair, No, you know, joy, or, mm -hmm. you know, I didn't know I could look this beautiful or, you know, you really showed me or, you know, whatever it might be. And yeah. I just, that's the beauty. That's why I say people are my passion and hair is my artistry. 
Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. Because we're always on this podcast empowering each other, but we really empower our clients as well. Like Vinica said, they don't, sometimes they don't know how beautiful they are because maybe they've always been told they're not right? But it's up to us to bring out their inner beauty and show that they have value and show that they have meaning. And, and same with a lot of us too. Even if you're the stylist behind the chair, you're just important. Make sure your own beauty shines and make sure that your own empowerment shines. Um, I want to thank you, Vinica. I'm so sorry that it's ending so soon. But I feel it's like it I, is too. I know, but <laughs> that means we have to have her back, right guys? So what we're going to do because the, the podcast had been so popular, what I'm starting to do now is doing some, some like either mini segments or we're doing some Facebook Live. Yeah, I would so love if, to. So if you're into Facebook Live and you want to see Venica back, just comment below um, or just send me a message or message us or send a message to Venica. I'll also have uh, Venica's where you can find her, her social media, or if you want to just kind of shout that out now, where's the best place to find you? Like website, social media, where can people find you? Well, I'm on Instagram and it's at mm -hmm. Studio Venica. And that's where I post all my work. And of course, you can direct message me there. Mm -hmm. And then I have a professional page on Facebook, which is Studio Venica at Studios West Salon Suites. And then I do have a website, which is StudioVenicaSalon.com. So yeah. all of those, vent, you know, <laughs> great. So I, yeah. I, I, I've checked her all out. I mean, her work is beautiful. Her website is incredible. I love the purple. I love how it's all done. It's, it's amazing. I love the logo. So I can't really say enough about you. I didn't have to because there were so many comments, as say, like we said at the beginning, that when soon as people found out her podcast wasn't even out yet, and people were like, <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> I love her. And I mean, it's just. So if I haven't got to you yet and you want to be a guest, don't worry. There's a lots of people that we're going to talk to, but right now we're only doing a new podcast every Monday, but we're adding more segments just because, you know, pe people are really loving this and people really need to be empowered. And like Vinica said, we really need to be a community together. All of us, there's more than enough clients for everybody. We all have skills. And I think that's part of our legacy. Whatever you leave behind, you know what I mean? If Guy Tang shares his formulas, if, if Steve shares his pod, his, shares his um, periscopes, if Venica shares her work, if I share my education, we all have areas of empowerment for ourselves. But if we all band together, we can be greater, not only for ourselves, but a community, but also for our clients and, and everyone as well. So I yes. want to say thank you so much. I'm, I keep saying thank you. <laughs> it's like, and then I want to keep talking to you. No, thank you. So we'll definitely have you back for a Facebook live. And if you guys want another podcast, um, Vinica already said yes. So we're going to have her on for another special podcast that we'll put in and we'll have some surprise information for you, some updates, some. So if you have questions that you want to ask Vinica or you want to know, make sure to comment below send them to me or send them to her. I'll have the links posted um, on the uh, podcast uh, audio page on iTunes. And we'll also have it also on Facebook as well. And just say, if you know Venica, you can message her or me or right here on the uh, podcast Facebook page. I thank you guys for coming today. Thank you so much, Venica. And we'll talk to you soon. <laughs> thank you so much. I loved it. <laughs> Bye-bye.